when I look up here, I want you to notice that this right here, this is my general ledger. This is what we are used to posting to. This is what we did in unit one. Would you agree? Looks very familiar. We have an account title, date, item, post reference, debit credit, debit credit. You remember, please, that the purpose of our balance column is for us to see at any given point what is the balance of this account. Now, this account that I have open is an asset. Now, how do I know that? Because it starts with the one right here. And our actual account title is called accounts receivable. We have two accounts that are in our general ledger that is the total of our subsidiary ledger. So on Friday, we went through and posted to our subsidiary ledger accounts payable. And that's all of the vendors, all the people that we buy from. And I want to point out in my general ledger, I have an account called accounts payable. So how do I prove that I posted correctly? At the end, when I go through to prepare my schedule of accounts payable or my schedule of accounts receivable, the number at the very bottom of that form that you did yesterday for 11-2 or on Friday for 11-1 needs to equal the balance in this account. If it doesn't, you've either made a mistake posting to the account accounts payable or a mistake in posting to your subsidiary ledger. Now, why are these accounts important to us? This account is really valuable to a business because what happens at any given point when I look at accounts payable, this tells me the total value I owe all of my vendors. At any given point, I can say, all right, I owe $17,000. I don't have to go through and add up all my individual ones. I just look here and it gives me that snapshot. Same thing when I look at a, the, my account accounts receivable. The, what I get by looking at this account is this tells me the total amount due to me from all of my customers. That's valuable. Businesses make decisions by that. Now, I still need to keep track of what I owe to my individual um, vendors and how much I have coming in from my individual um, customers and that is why we have that subsidiary ledger because that tells us individually where we're at but the total amount is very important for making decisions on a business so for example when we look at purchasing new items for the Thunder Zone one of the things I'm going to take a look at is how much do we currently have outstanding for accounts payable meaning how much do we owe so for example, if I owe $750 because we bought some locks and I have another shirt order out here that I have to pay, I can't just look at the value of my cash. I need to see other items that I'm going to have to pay to determine, do I have enough funds to make those purchases? So your schedule of accounts, um, excuse me, your controlling account accounts receivable and payable are in here. Now, when we go through to post, you're gonna be like, yeah, yeah, I know how to post, but where things are gonna be different is right here in our general ledger where we have a spot for two numbers. I have to post both to the account accounts payable as well as to my subsidiary ledger account of electrographic supply. And we also need to go through and watch how we're posting the order of our ledgers. Does that make a little bit of sense? We'll do some examples. Let's do that. Directions for 11-3 uh, says use the partial cash payments and general journal below. General ledger account forms are given to, um, and your instructor will guide you through the following example. Number one, it says start a new page for the general ledger account supplies office. The account title is 1145 and the balance for October 1st of the current year is 3824 So I need to scroll down, find my account supplies office. They already have the account title and the account number in there. I just need to put in the date, October 1st. Uh, this is a balance from a previous ledger that was full. So I'm going to write in the word balance and I'm going to put a V for a check mark. And I'm going to go right over to the balance column. Now, supplies office is an asset. I know that because it has an account number that starts with a one. So its balance must be a debit of $3,824. 
Now the only time right now that we're ever going to write in the item column is if we ever have to open up an account that carries over a new balance. Otherwise, we're going to leave that item column blank. Instruction number two says post the October 19th general debit entry of the cash payments journal to the appropriate general ledger account. So right now they want us to go to my cash payments journal. So I'm going to scroll up here. And on line 19 they have, or excuse me, date of the 19th, they have supplies office and what we are going to find is they don't actually, they already said that it's posted for us when it's not, so there's a little bit of mistake on Applia there. But I want you to point out is we are posting to our general ledger. So we are going to post from our general columns. So you'll see that general debit has a debit of 69.60, so I'm going to go through and put that in my supplies office. And that's going to go for my C cash payments. And that is page 15. I do sometimes find if I have to do a lot of scrolling up and down because my journals are too big, I will change the zoom of my screen so I don't have to do as much scrolling. And to change my zooming, I can click on my dots in the upper right hand corner and I can click on it to make it a little bit smaller. I know that makes it harder for you to see, but then again, a little bit different for scrolling. I'm debiting it for $69.60. It already had a debit balance of $3,824, so I'm going to add the $69.60 to it. So I have a new balance of $3,893.60. The last step that I would do would be to take account number 1145 and put it back up on our post reference, but Apple already had that done for us. Instruction number three tells me to post October 12th general journal entry, October 26th and 28th. So basically what they're doing is they want us to post our general journal stuff. So you are going to find 97% um, of your items that need to be posted from your general journal are going to go into your general ledger. I said 97, not 100% because we have to go into our subsidiary ledger. So on line one, we have October 12th, sales returns and allowances for $52 as a debit. So I'm just going to find that account for sales returns and allowances. Sales returns and allowances is a contra account, which means it has the opposite balance of its controlling account. Sales had a credit balance. Sales returns and allowances is going to have a debit balance. It's going to go from G11, and I'm going to debit it $52. So if I had a debit balance of 903 and I debit it 52, I'm going to add the two together, and that should give me $955 as a debit. Remember the balance column purpose is to tell me or show me exactly how much I have in that account. So. As a business, if I look at this account, this tells me I've had customers return $955 worth of product to me. If I have a very large number there, that tells me customers aren't liking what they're getting from us. Maybe I should switch vendors. I need to find out why because that costs us a lot of money to go ahead and process and return those items. You want to have that be a low number. The next line I'm going to do, line two for my general journal, is sales tax payable. The date is going to be the 12th. It's going to be from G11 again. And we are going to be debiting sales tax payable for $3.12. Because the customer returned the product, they no longer owe us that sales tax, and we don't have to pay it to the government, so I need to subtract that from its balance. Sales tax payable has a credit balance. I'm going to subtract that. So it now, now I owe the government $1,406.88. We collect sales tax, but we have to then pay it to the government for it to go through. Count number 2,140 is going to go back up onto my um, general <coughs> journal. Excuse me. 
Line three is where we get a little bit different. Before, we went through and posted it to our subsidiary ledger. Now I actually have to open up accounts receivable, put the date of the 12th, G11, and I'm going to be crediting it for the total amount returned from my customer of $55.12. Accounts receivable is an asset, has a debit normal balance. I need to subtract from it 55.12 gives me a new balance of $1,284.73. And I would put back up on top um, account number 1130. Now ideally, if we didn't do application 1, application 2, application 3, what you would do is first post to accounts receivable in your general ledger. Then I would go to my subsidiary ledger and find a, um, an accounts receivable ledger and find David Bishop, and then I would post this one. So I would post this 5512 twice right in a row. One to the controlling account, and then one to my subsidiary ledger. But we're just breaking it into individual steps. Supplies office, date of the 26th. G11, we bought some office supplies in account. Has a debit balance, and I'm debiting it, so I have to go through and add it on there. Last step is always to put that account number back up on top. Line five of my general journal is to post to accounts payable for electrographic supply. So I'm going to find my account accounts payable. Date is the 26th. Post reference is G11, standing for General Journal, page 11. I'm crediting it $2,544. There's already a credit balance in there, so I have to add the two together. Last step is always to put your account number back into your journal. Now, the last general journal entry that is on page 11 of our general journal is accounts payable is being debited and purchases, returns, and allowances is being credited. That is going through and dealing with the fact that we return something to Arden Things. We no longer wanted it. That's what a debit memorandum means. We're returning to our accounts uh, payable. So that is going to have our accounts payable going down. So my new balance of accounts payable after my second general journal entry is going to be $4,936.80. The last one that I'm posting to is purchases, returns, and allowances. Purchases, returns, and allowances is a contra account, meaning it takes away from the account purchases. Purchases has a debit normal balance. Purchases, returns, and loans has a credit normal balance. We use it to keep track of how much stuff we return to our vendors. For the same reason, we keep track of what our customers return. So we can see whether or not we are buying things that we shouldn't be. Are we spending a lot of ton money and wasted time with vendors that are not working out for us? The last step is, again, always is to put your account number back up on top. Go ahead and try that um, on your own. I see a lot of you are on that one already.